Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I will be explaining the difference or the comparison between Jenkins and GitHub Actions. Which one will be the future and what should I learn? We'll be discussing this topic in detail. Before I start, I would like to let you know that if you have not checked out my Udemy course, that is 50 DevOps interview questions and answer, do go it and check it out. It's a course for your preparation to achieve better results in your DevOps interview process. Also, if you're interested in a free 30 minutes DevOps discussion, career discussion, or you want to take up a one-on-one -on -one Python for DevOps course with me, then email me, or you can also send me a WhatsApp message, which is mentioned in the description. Now, let us jump right into the topic, the comparison between Jenkins, versus GitHub Actions. Before I jump into what uh, what is the comparison, everyone is aware of Jenkins. I, I, I'm pretty much sure. Now, what is GitHub Actions? Let me explain this. GitHub Actions is also a CI CD tool, similar to Jenkins. Now, but like the name says, it is by GitHub. So that is obvious, I think. Before we go further, let us try to understand what is CI-CD and why do we need CI-CD at first place. We have some code that is present and this code is present in GitHub repository, like we know, GitHub repo. If we want to test this code and then build this code, after that, we have to deploy this code for doing all of these particular actions, we make use of a CI CD tool. CI and CD tool. Of course, the most famous tool that is uh, built, that is easy to learn, understand, has been Jenkins. If we want to set up a Jenkins, it must be a cloud, it can be AWS, wherever it is, we have to set up EC2 instances or we have to go with Docker deployment or Kubernetes. Either way, we have some piece of configuration and infra to maintain. So this will become an overhead when a company starts growing. Like everything that is moving towards serverless components, obviously the CI CD also needs to move towards serverless components. Now, what is serverless components? Serverless is nothing but you don't have to maintain any piece of infrastructure. That's it. So this is the problem with Jenkins, let us say. Now, where does the uh, GitHub Actions comes into picture? Remember, I said you, we have some code, right? Where is this code present? This code is present in GitHub. Now, what if GitHub itself comes up with a CI CD option? If they come up with a CI CD option, won't you be using it? You will definitely be using it. Why? Because it is already integrated in your repo and it is easier to use. And that is GitHub Action. GitHub Action is nothing but a CI CD built in integration, built in integration that is present where you can integrate the CI tools and the CD part into the GitHub repository right away. Now, what about the infrastructure? Where, where does the infrastructure fit into picture? That's a common question, right? In GitHub Actions, there is something called as GitHub uh, agents, let us say, or GitHub action agents, let us say, GitHub action agents or executors, we can call them. So these are some action or agents. They have two options. The first option is they run in GitHub. That is the company or the place where you have stored your GitHub repository. And second, you can also host them inside your cloud, inside your cloud. Now, if you were to be a small organization, then you would prefer option number one because this is going to give you 100% serverless CI and CD setup. But if you have some limitations, then you can also go with two, but this is not going to give you a 100% serverless component, but at least you have 
80% of serverless component setup done. Now that is the difference when it comes to Jenkins versus GitHub Actions. I hope you are able to understand now. One of my students asked me, if this is the way where everything is headed, why should I learn Jenkins, sir? Now, this is an obvious question. Should I learn, should I learn Jenkins or GitHub Actions? This is a very common question that gets asked to me. Now, please remember, there is no one fit answer to everyone, right? If you are a fresher in terms that you are trying to uh, move into DevOps career or you are someone new, then I would recommend you to learn Jenkins. Why? Because, because point number one, point number one, you have many training content, training content is high. Training content is high. You can easily learn this from a, a different kinds of training content. So that is point number one. Point number two, it is going to help you understand CICD better. Jenkins has been present from so long. So you, there is good documentation. You have a lot of examples and you are going to feel much more comfortable implementing CICD if you are doing it for the first time. Hence, if you are a fresher, then my recommendation is to first learn Jenkins. If you are already a DevOps engineer, you are an experienced DevOps engineer, then you are working on Jenkins already, or you know what is CICD, then top up your knowledge with GitHub Actions. Top up your knowledge with GitHub Actions. This will help you a lot. Remember, GitHub Actions is new. You don't have all the companies implementing GitHub Actions day in and day out, right? So it is going to be a bit of challenge for you to really go and implement this, try to learn it. But that is what you want to do because this is going to give you an edge in your next interview. So I hope I am clear on who should learn Jenkins, who should spend time on GitHub Actions or what you should, what you should do. And other question that was asked to me is, uh, what about GitHub Actions? Is GitHub Actions free? Because Jenkins is free, right? Now GitHub Actions is free for certain time, but if you want to implement this for a very big organization, then it will not be free. Because again, it is serverless, somebody has to maintain it, you have to pay money, but that is not huge. I will show you one example. I have a sample repo that you can see here. And if you, you can see actions that is mentioned here, there is an option called as actions that is mentioned here. Now this is, this itself is called as GitHub actions. Okay. This itself is called as GitHub actions. Now this might not be enabled in all the repos. You have to enable it after you create the repo, but now in this example, it is enabled. You can click on GitHub actions, and then you can see there is a GitHub actions for Terraform. That is to check the Terraform file, to deploy Terraform code, whatnot. You have an example to deploy an ECS, Amazon ECS image. You have so many examples present. Now, the whole CICD part also is developed by an open source. Many people write the common CICD stuff that has been used. So you don't even have to spend time to write this. And it is very easy to configure. This is just a sneak peek into what GitHub Actions is all about. If you are interested to know more about it and learn more about it, then definitely do. I hope I have given a clear picture in terms of a roadmap on what is the comparison between Jenkins and GitHub Actions, what is the future, and who has to learn Jenkins and who has to focus on GitHub Actions. That is it for this video. If you have liked this video, don't forget to leave a comment and like the video. This is going to help me keep me motivated to create more contents. Thank you and speak to you in the next video.